So this is a good question. So they canceled, obviously, they just canceled yesterday, the March LSAT. And they're looking at ways to provide it remotely, which they easily could do now that it's digital, or I don't know if it's easy. But given the fact that, wait, what's, yeah, someone was saying eight weeks. I saw that as well. Uh, the CDC is saying eight weeks from now, right? So that's about two months. That's going to push us beyond the April 25th LSAT. So I think it's likely that they're going to cancel. I think they're just stalling because they don't know for sure yet what the plan is. Um, but I, I, I guess I kind of just plan on June. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. Like, uh, when I read the email, I, I know, like, in your podcast, you're always talking about how uh, LSAT, uh, like, LSAC is really sneaking and trying to make sure they keep their money and sometimes, like, fuck people over when they cancel classes. Sorry, I cussed. Um, <laughs> so I was thinking the same thing when I was reading the email. I was like, please don't mess me over when you're make, going to make me think I'm going to take it in April and then you're going to cancel it. So, sorry, I was just... Um, showing my anxiety over the test. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's an interesting problem because they, um, I mean, historically, they've been real jerks. Like, there's been, like, historically, they just, you know, you need to cancel for some reason, they won't let you if it's past the deadline and all that stuff, and they would just be like, no, and they wouldn't talk to you. I would say in the last year and a half, they've become a lot more friendly, or maybe two years, because of the GRE uh, competing with them now. So it does seem like they're, and with this all going on, I suspect they'll be accommodating. So I don't think that's going to be as much of a problem. But even if the April LSAT goes forward, it's going to be a mess maybe. Because if you think that everyone was signed up for March and a bunch of people were signed up for April, and now they just automatically moved everybody from March to April, if April does end up happening, it, it seems like it's going to be beyond normal capacity, at least to some degree. Um, I mean, I don't know how much overlap there is between the two tests. There's going to be some, but I mean, a decent amount of people who are not going to be taking it in April are now going to be taking it in April if they end up doing it. So I don't know. It, it sounds like they're probably going to run into capacity issues. And then when they run into those issues, they're already thinking like, oh, this is going to be a challenge. The CDC is saying don't meet. I guess they're just going to say it's easier to move to June or move to sometime in May, right? Like offer another test in May. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. So do they automatically enroll us into April test or do we have to um, go in and register for ourselves? From what I understand, if you were signed up from for the March LSAT on their website, mm -hmm. they say that they automatically moved you to the uh, April LSAT. But they also said that they will contact everyone individually. Um, um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so this is more of like a personal question, but I, I'm assuming other people might be able to relate to this. Um, just because of all the coronavirus stuff and how it sort of like populated everybody's mind and how like life sort of just like changed mm -hmm. really quickly for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, I often found myself like in a very weird predicament where I can't really think of anything else besides the virus or besides like, you know, people who I care about and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And I haven't had a chance to really like study for the past like two days, three mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you, what would you recommend that people do in this sort of really weird situation? Like this situation right now is kind of weird because I'm used to just going to the hotel and mm -hmm. um, doing the class versus like doing it over Zoom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I don't think you're alone because um, I mean, Nathan and I just recorded a podcast this morning and he was talking about how ask button requests have dropped dramatically, which is a little strange because, you know, when you're studying in the demon, it's not like, I mean, that, that's, that's an online tool, right? So in theory, anyone and everyone who has been studying can keep studying um, just from home. But, and in theory, people have more time now, right? People are working from home. I don't know. I mean, maybe people are more busy too on some level for some reason, but um, people have more time, but they're not studying as much. I, I would say to the extent you can, just meditation helps and then like meditate for 10 minutes on some app and then be like, okay, I'm going to focus on LSAT for the next 
half hour, and if it's easier, just drill. Because with drilling, you can just think, oh, I'm just going to do one more problem. And then, you know, you can go back to thinking about what's going on. I mean, it, it might honestly be good to not read the news. <laughs> I'm not sure if there's much you can do. If you're staying at home and you are you have food and all that stuff, then it's probably better just to buckle down and, and try not to think about it until the end of the day or something like that. Yeah, I originally thought that because I have to work at home, mm. um, that it would be a, my first thought was like, oh, this is great. I get to study. But then I realized like for the past two days, like I've actually studied a lot less than being really busy going to the office and doing a bunch of other stuff. So, yeah, it's is that, very weird. Is that maybe because now there doesn't seem to be a boundary between work and home? Like, you can just work indefinitely? Um, no, I, it's, like, maybe a little bit of that, but it's, like, the lack of, like, the routine mm. and, like, being outside and being around people and just have the regular interactions, I guess. I don't know. It's yeah. just been kind of weird. What I've been doing is I've been like working from home all day and then going on a long walk and then studying and then that like breaks it up. And it's been like better so that I can like divide my day in half basically between like work and studying. Um, and then I also just like getting outside because it's terrible being stuck inside all day. You know, I think that's really good advice because I feel like walking is this underrated thing like, it's not as sexy as, like, going and lifting weights or doing CrossFit or something that's more intense. But it's extraordinarily beneficial, especially when you go outside and get the sun and all that stuff. Like, all sorts of things apparently happen. So, um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so setting a schedule, maybe, and then adding walking. That's good stuff. Um, someone says... I study very early in the morning, 5 a.m., before the world is awake. Uh, that's a good idea to do stuff in the morning. One thing I will say, uh, studies have shown that it takes one to two hours for our minds to like fully wake up. So if at 5 a.m. you're like firing on all cylinders, that's great. But apparently for most people it does take time, even after you wake up and you may feel awake, to not be fully functional um, mentally. And I'd hate for you guys to not be doing your best. So maybe the ideal is to do it as, not necessarily as early as you can, because some people are not morning people, but choose the best hour of your day, and that may be early, and locking that into the LSAT, a lot of times people turn off their phone, they put it in airplane mode or they put it in another room, like literally just like get it out of here and then you study and then when things happen and people are buzzing you, you have no awareness and the reality is it doesn't matter. But if you are aware of that, you become like distracted by it even though you're telling yourself, I can deal with that later, right? Like it's just better out of sight, out of mind. Um, cool. Any other thoughts, comments, questions? Yeah, I just had a question. If the L April also gets moved to a later date, is there a way we can extend access to the beam? And like, how does that work? Oh, um, yes. So, hmm. So you guys, uh, let me. <laughs> sorry, there's like so many classes going on. You all are going. You were going for the March. Some of you were going for March, and some of you were going for April. Is that right? Yeah, I'm, I was going for April. I know a couple others are. Yeah. I just went for March. Okay, so everyone will definitely have access until April. If it does get extended, um, yeah, we'll just extend it to whatever test. It, I mean, if it, if it gets extended to May, we'll just extend it to May. And if it, get ex if it goes to June, we'll just extend it to June. So, is that what you're asking? I guess? Oh. Yeah, no, that's not helpful. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Cool. Um, good stuff.